data center technology is evolving rapidly. I'm Alan Zajcik with NetEvents TV, and I'm talking to experts today about what they see as the biggest innovations and rapid developments in the data center. What do you consider to be the biggest advances in data center technology? I think the biggest advance that we've seen in data center technologies is the abstraction of data center function into software away from hardware. And uh, the fact that this is being done across the entire stack, starting from compute down to storage, down to interconnects, I think the fact that you can abstract all that function into software allows us to you know, make the data center a lot more agile, more, more flexible, and uh, a lot more efficient. I think that definitely is the most significant advance that's happened in data center over the last 10 years. It's the ever-increasing speeds that data centers are implementing, going from 10 gigabit to 40 gigabit to 100 to 400, eventually to 800. And in order to do that, what's happening is copper is running out of steam. Copper just cannot switch fast enough. And so more and more data centers are doing two things. One is they're putting fiber optic cable everywhere. And as part of that, they're switching from multi-mode fiber to single-mode fiber for a couple of reasons. One is single-mode fiber goes a further distance, whereas multi-mode fiber only goes 100 meters. And secondly, single-mode fiber is much less expensive than multi-mode fiber. In fact, single-mode fiber is cheaper per foot than dental floss. The biggest advance in data center technologies is intent-based networking. The ability to uh, automate in a powerful way the entire life cycle of your network services, which results in uh, order magnitude reduction in costs, and enables you to really get into the businesses that you want to get into without being hindered by infrastructure. So I think there are two advances in data center technologies that are really beginning to impact the industry. First and foremost is software-defined networking. You know, we've experienced over the last seven to eight years the ability to move virtual machines with the click of a mouse from one location to another. But what's really prevented the, you know, the IT operator or the CIO from benefiting from that flexibility is that the network couldn't follow the virtual machine. So SDN has absolutely made a big difference to the utility of data centers because I've now got the ability ability to orchestrate my network as I move my compute and storage around. The second thing that I think's really had a big impact is data center as a service. If you think about the logistics of operating a data center, there's a lot of telemetry that's being delivered by data center operators, power consumption, thermal monitoring, humidity monitoring, and there's a range of data center operators that are delivering data center as a service products so that I don't necessarily need to move to a data center or go check out my rack to be able to see the telemetry and or to you know, monitor my power consumption, for example. Who are the companies driving those innovations? Sure, I think uh, the advances in these uh, in data center technologies has essentially come from the hyperscalers, such as Google and Facebook. If you think about Google's technology, you know, yes, the search algorithm is very important, but you know, what drives that technology is the ability to build data centers that span the entire globe and collect data from every facet of life across the globe, and the ability to analyze that and give, and give out search results in record time. I think that's really what drives uh, Google's success. Uh, so these companies such as Google and Facebook have definitely driven a lot of innovation. A lot of companies, startups and private companies and uh, public companies are actually bringing a lot of those innovations to the enterprise and to the, uh, to the multitude of companies outside the hyperscalers. And that can include uh, companies uh, that are in the Silicon Valley, private companies, startup companies such as, uh, uh, you know, Abstra or, or uh, uh, Dust Photonics or you know, PCC Global that are kind of driving innovation, trying to bring some of the innovation from the hyperscaler down to the enterprise. So I think the organizations that are driving SDN particularly would have to pay due credit to Stanford University. You know, they've made major contributions, particularly through their innovative uh, design of a protocol called OpenFlow. Now, that may or may not be the future evolution of SDN, but it certainly was the, whole, the hallmark of thinking about the fluidity of network and making it something that you could move as easily as you could move compute. So I think from Stanford, we saw OpenFlow, and then from OpenFlow, we've seen a lot of uh, startups 
evolve into SDN. Uh, some key ones, I think the Contrail, which is recently acquired by Juniper, has done a lot of work of network orchestration for SDN. Uh, and then I think what you will see next is MEF as playing a really strategic role in contributing to SDN. So SDN inside the data center is a solved problem because we've got Cisco, Juniper, and other vendors providing uh, software applications that make their, their physical infrastructure more fluid. Where the problem really lies today is my east-west. You know, I can now orchestrate my network, but how do I orchestrate other networks? And I think MEF plays a really strategic role through what they refer to as their lifecycle orchestration interface or Sonata API in providing the ability to orchestrate my network into other networks. How do those advances benefit the data center operator and the enterprise behind it? Intent-based networking enables network operators to uh, operate their networks with efficiencies that were never seen before, uh, with in a, in a lot more automated way, they can get their infrastructure to do exactly what they want it to do, and they get visibility into their infrastructures like was never available before. The main benefit comes from the ability to scale at a very low cost. If you think about Google and the fact that you know they have this service is entirely free for consumers and the only way they make money is through advertising, one of the big advantages, one of the reasons why they can do that is because it doesn't cost a lot to do the searches across their data center, across all the data centers. So you know if we can translate those economics back to the enterprise, the data center operators will be will benefit a lot. I think the other benefit obviously comes from the fact that abstraction of function into software allows a tremendous amount of flexibility and agility. Uh, the fact is that you know you can innovate in software much faster than you can innovate in hardware, which essentially allows uh, any data center operator to kind of get the latest and greatest in technology and use it to the benefit of uh, the users uh, who are accessing those data centers. So I think uh, if you to summarize the three big benefits are efficiency, agility, and flexibility in terms of how infrastructure gets managed. In the near term, I think SDN provides the ability for the, the enterprise that has moved their infrastructure into a co-location facility to have the ability to orchestrate their network in the way that they used to be able to when the data center was right next door. I could put down my cup of coffee, I could open the door and walk into my captive data center and reconnect infrastructure as I needed to. When you move that into a co-location facility or outside your four walls, you need to have an ability to do the same thing. And SDN has provided provided the enterprise infrastructure operator the ability to orchestrate their network, either be for security or performance reasons, isolating storage from other parts of their network. The business is moving much faster than it did in the past. Uh, application developers inside the enterprise want to spin up infrastructure quickly. They want to be able to deliver storage to that infrastructure. And SDN provides the ability for the CIO to connect all of their different applications to storage and other infrastructure. Can you name another big advance that's happening in technology that perhaps we've not talked about yet so far? Okay. Well, there's really uh, uh, two advances being made in, in photonics. One is the move to, to silicon photonics, which has been a promise for quite some time, but it really hasn't seen reality. And the reason is that there's still an alignment issue of connecting the fiber to the silicon photonics chip or the laser or the photo detector. That problem is the same. Actually, it's harder for single mode fiber because the diameter of the active area of a single mode fiber is only eight microns. For multi-mode fiber, it's 40 microns. So the alignment is much easier for, for, for multi-mode fiber than it is for single mode fiber. So what we're doing at Dust Photonics is twofold. One is we're going to adopt single uh, silicon photonics in our next generation of product, we'll either develop it ourselves or we'll buy it externally, whatever is most cost effective. But with that, we will use the technology we've already developed for multi-mode fiber, passive alignment, we'll apply that to single mode fiber. Because with silicon photonics, you still have to get the laser light into the silicon chip where you can modulate it, you can move it around, you can detect it, and then you can transmit it back out the fiber upstream to other uh, connections within the data center, and you have to receive it into the silicon photonics chip. So you still have to line the fiber up with the silicon photonics chip, and we can do that passively.
with our technology. I think uh, the automation is kind of uh, you know the big uh, uh, big driver of uh, of change in the in the in the in the data center of today. Uh, the fact is that you know a, a data center as big as a football field can be managed by ten people is really what the world's coming to. Uh, it's not happened in the enterprise yet, but you know the Googles and Facebooks are definitely doing that. So uh, I think uh, you know the automation, the ability to use data, leverage data, and kind of have machines do some of the tasks that humans have been doing in the past. I think is uh, you know the biggest advance that could happen over the next few years in the enterprise. I think P4, uh, a new approach to programming the data plane, is going to have a really big impact. We've seen distributed state implementations for networking for a long period of time. Many would argue that the border gateway protocol, which underpins all of the internet for its connectivity, has reached its limits and that we need a new way to programmatically address basically the silicon that's driving the packet forwarding. You know, how do we control the data plane? OpenFlow is a good way to separate control from data plane, but I'm really excited about what P4 is going to do in terms of allowing to distribute program state across a broad network. If you look at infrastructure, right, um, we now have you know, compute capabilities and storage cap cap capabilities enabled with uh, SSD and networking capabilities that really uh, provide uh, organizations uh, technological power that never existed before, which enables uh, digital transformation, uh, machine learning, you know, big data, in a way that uh, has a direct impact on your bottom line. And beyond that, are there some areas that you believe are really ripe for innovation and perhaps industry is just waiting for the next big breakthrough? I think the challenge for data center operators is that the co-location facility operators are really acknowledging that the value proposition is no longer ping, power and pipe. They need to be able to have the ability to provide broad scale connectivity to their facilities. Nobody is operating infrastructure in isolation anymore. We're all seeing hybrid cloud deployments. So the key thing that a data center operator needs today is a rich suite of connectivity. And that's why you know, we've focused on Console Connect platform recently acquired by PCCW Global as a partner for data center operators so that, that we can bring our point of presence into their data center and deliver them to connectivity solutions that they've never had before? I think uh, automation to the extent that you know uh, can be done proactively and uh, is kind of still a, a work in progress you know it takes a little bit of uh, record keeping in order to you know get insight that can be proactively um, implemented so that's one thing the other thing is that there are certain components that still continue to be very expensive and uh, you know uh, things such as uh, photonics uh, I mean, there are some companies uh, that are working on those uh, advancements right now, but some of those uh, technologies still can, can still be uh, lowered in terms of costs. I think those are areas that I think uh, still need a lot of work and will continue to be areas where there is uh, future innovation. As you've heard from photonics to intent-based networking to many other things besides, the data center and information technology is evolving very rapidly. For NetEvents TV, I'm Alan Zeitschick.